Inshallah what we have from our SMC family online, mashaAllah this is very, very active, lots of videos. I think people got those different apps for video makers and they're making <laughs> videos all over, alhamdulillah. Allah reward everybody, dress everybody and you know, take the, the immense blessings of da'wah. Our life is to spread the light and spread the love, give people a chance. And even there are like uh, witches and warlocks coming to Islam. On social media there's these crazy people <laughs> dealing with all sorts of crazy things. Now they're convinced Islam is the way. So uh, you know there's no hiding anymore. We said the day will come, will gray will go. Everybody was kumbaya and talking nice and said they didn't pass the lemon test, you know. when when when. When difficulty starts, the true belief of people will come out and the characteristics will come out and their words, their true words will come out. And uh, we are the people of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. I think can be nothing more sweeter than Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. That Allah said, whatever you want to do, represent me as Allah, the most compassionate and most merciful that sets the tone for everything, how we're going to live our lives and how we're going to die from this life of ours and pass from this life of ours inshaAllah. What we got out there inshaAllah? Don't say nothing, we've been talking so much for these last few weeks, <laughs> people are like sleeping. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, in regards to last week's soba, it was mentioned that the phrase qul is the divine speech between Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad okay. Is the secret of this phrase, Qul, what makes the Surah Falak and Surah Nas so powerful against negativity? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. These are the four Quls. <coughs> These are immense powers that Allah can only dress to the lisan al-haq. So, Qaf wal Qur'an al-Majeed. And then now the secret of lamb, right? So this lamb, sometimes you'll see an alif on it. Why? Because only this lamb and the lisan of Prophet can carry the word of Allah So it means the, the lamb has an immense power that it was created to represent. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Represent the Qaf. That Allah's Qudra, power, Qur'an, Quwwa, everything identified by power, Allah created this lamb, this lisan, this tongue, an ancient tongue to be known by. So it has immense power, un unfathomable power it has that we can't understand. Sometimes you see the lamb and the alif that moves through it. Showing that Allah is on the heart of this lamb. And if you open the lamb, it becomes lamb, alif, mim when you open it. And the alif is right there in the middle. So these are immense realities of the lamb and the, the tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad. So Allah's divinely speech can only be heard. By Prophet Not an angel, not a prophet, not anyone can hear to the frequency and the reality that Prophet represents. That's why Nabi Musa's example is so important.
because he represents the highest of these prophetic realities from the Prophets of Bani Israel. And what he's hearing, he's now understanding that, uh, let me see you, that what frequency and what reality am I hearing? Because he was hearing Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result he wanted to see that reality and Allah clarified through the tongue of Prophet you can never see the alif but I will show you my sign, my greatest sign. And so what he said, what he saw was Nur Muhammad That's why the Nat tells us, ask Sayyidina Musa what he saw. So means these are, these are the immense powers and realities. So these surahs have an immense power from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad From the beginning of Qur'an, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is a crown on Sayyidina Muhammad and then Surat Al-Nas then is the, is the ending of this story and the reality. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. JazakAllah for this sohbah. Uh, can you please share how we should behave in these times when there is injustice in this world? Oh, I think that's what we did for the last yeah. few nights. Is that. Uh, this is a, a sign now for us to fight the injustice within ourselves. I don't, Allah clarifies for us, I don't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves. So we see all these things and think, Ya Rabbi is this going to happen to me? Let me now to fix my injustice, my bad character my oppression upon myself before my grave comes and they should be busy fixing themselves. But you see the reverse because shaitan has the mass of people under his control and all the angry yelling screaming people are out on the streets screaming for change. But I don't think there are people whom Allah would listen to because they're yelling, screaming and showing sorts of, all sorts of very bad characteristics. You see some of the words when they start exchanging with each other because shaitan likes to bring out the real characteristic of people and he loves it when there's a microphone and a camera from all over the world watching you saying all sorts of crazy words and say, you don't represent Allah talking like that. Another one was like an imam and he was, said, let's go to the side and let's, you know, fight this out. That's what kind of imam is this, <laughs> go onto the street and do these things. Means you still have to fix the, the shaitan inside of you, fix the, the sickness with inside ourselves so that Allah can make this a world that's better and at least be ready for Sayyidina Mahdi to be clean for that reality. That's why the great cleansing is beginning. People whom didn't want to clean themselves, Allah described, I will clean you with people who have no mercy. And as a result you will be sparkling and shining for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi But if you think he's coming via TikTok to a bunch of nasty, dirty, filthy people that will say, oh, oh he's here, look I saw on TikTok, let's go follow him. <laughs> yeah, they have a surprise coming. So no, it's not going to happen like that. So the world is in a very, very dirty place. And now Allah is beginning the, the shower and bathing part and this is now the great cleansing coming upon the earth. So instead of screaming on the street, go take your shower, clean yourselves. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah In respect to Firaun raising Sayyidina Musa salam. Will Firaun of today raise Imam Mahdi? Of course they are. They're, they're raising all the Mahdiyoon. <laughs> yeah, of 
course they are. Because people plan and Allah plans better. So that, that's, that's Allah's way of showing, look He wrote the program. As much as Pharaoh wanted to do and to, to make a change and to come against any sort of destined change that coming for him, Allah shows that, I'm the one who wrote this program, this is completely impossible for you to understand it. So much so I'll put the one who I'm going to bring you down in your home. You will feed him, you will wash him, you will pay for his, his education and then he will come back and throw you out and you'll be happy that he did it. <laughs> so this, this shows for people of faith that you know you have nothing to fear but Allah. There's no shaitan to fear, there's nothing to fear, just we have to be good with Allah and that goodness is expressed with good character and love for Sayyidina Muhammad And if that's truly what you love then find the ulul am who represent that. And as a result they accompany the ulul am, their lives, they listen, they, they, they learn from that reality and they're dressed by that reality. And then Allah describes for them, they have nothing to fear nor grief. Why grief? This should be a time of grief. Yeah, you have grief in your heart for the absolute horrific nature of humans. You know, this is what we've, ta we've taught this for 20 years that people will sell you for bag. They sold Sayyidina Isa for bag of coins. If Sayyidina Isa got some coins, at, at least we, won't, we probably won't even get a bag, they'll sell you for less <laughs> than the bag. So this is the human nature of people, when you see these calamities, this is just the tears that come for how horrific humans are to each other. And then you know God is really going to clean this earth. But the cleaning will have a, a net result. The net result is that people will be prepared now for very, very spiritually powerful realities that enter onto the earth, but they are not they're not capable of that now. People's characters and demeanor is not capable of that now. So there has to be a, a washing and a cleansing. And we describe that in other talks. As shaitan is trying to inflict harm, then these souls will move towards the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi and they will give their allegiance to this world of light. And anyone who wants to see it, Get the episode of the world, the Lord of the Rings. When they were trying to fight all the demonic forces, they had to go to the cave to get those souls that had passed away for support. Why? Because we're fighting an unseen force, an unseen negative energy. It's not going to be by physical people, it's going to be unseen powers supporting against unseen negativity. So this is then the reality and haqqaiq of why so many calamities in the last days is they're going to come towards realities. If they couldn't get it with their physicality they will give their allegiance with their spirituality and they will have served Allah for their final destination. So this is a very high, a high reward for a soul inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Sayyidi, if we get heated or get fevers, does that mean good energies always or can it be bad energies as well? It can be anything but just understanding for now the concept of fevers and energy that comes onto the soul. So sickness comes, the soul may be heating up to purge a sickness. So when, when you don't want something or you want to clean something you boil it, right? So the soul has its own system and pharmaceutical system within itself. It understands that when a sickness or difficulty comes immediately heat is sent into that region to speed up a recovery. That's why if you injure yourself, if you become subtle you just move your hand near you'll feel heat coming out in that area. So when they say of oh, spiritual healers they have a sensitive hand, they don't have to touch, they can feel an area and feel that warmth is coming out, there's some sort of injury there. And the body's trying to heat up 
to recover and to heal that. So then there's many different understandings in the energy on how the body will heal itself, how it will try to burn out impurities. So th that's a whole system when people go into fever there's some sort of a purging of negativity that the body finds it necessary to heat up and push out. So in old days they would sort of cool the body so that you don't go too high in your temperature but there's no need to take medicines to completely try to artificially drop it. So the purpose of dropping the fever is then is you're negating what the, what the body's trying to do and what the soul is trying to do. In spirituality you have to be heated because you activate through your soul. So when you're in meditation, you're in the zikr, an active soul, a soul that is heart is lit continuously heats up and they get all their clothes is soaking because they're operating from the, the soul reality and heat. So those are the signs of souls that are very active, very open, their hearts are open and their energy is flowing. So there's a whole world of that understanding. You get the energy book the, the, from the angelic power that goes deep into the understandings of the qudra, the energy, how to connect, how to breathe with energy and you begin to operate with energy, how to send your energy out and how to bring in your breath with energy because everything now is the movement of energy on you and how does it flow through your system. So yes, many different uh, realities of, of the body and its heatings. And if something negative comes and tries to attack then the body tries to heat up and push out that negativity, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So sometimes we feel waves of himma and sometimes not. How do we keep the zeal and himma? Struggling through it. <coughs> Somebody emailed that they feel something in meditation then it goes and what happened, did they lose it? No, it's a system in which it's not supposed to be felt all the time because then you artificially feel that you reach something. If there's 10,000 veils and Allah give you feeling like you connected, you hit the veil, you hit only one veil, there's 9,999 other veils for you to keep moving. So if, if He let you stay in a perpetual state of, oh this is fantastic, I feel so much energy, that would be it, your, your, your journey to Allah would be one veil because you would stop thinking, I, I reach, I reach the highest point. So the whole understanding is that you connect, you feel energies, you feel great, that should be motivating you, they cut it. Why? Because then now with more zeal, more himma, more wanting to do and more doing the zikr, go out, try to do service, share posts, do anything that they've asked you to do so that you get your nazar and do your zikrs, your meditations and all of a sudden you feel like, yeah, into another veil. So it's a, a lifelong process of continuously doing what we have to do and then Allah uplifting the servant. But then imagine if you know you just got it on the first shot or if it just stays for six months you won't do anything. You just sit and be fascinated with what you're feeling and, oh I'm seeing this, I'm seeing these things, I'm feeling these things, the person will do nothing. So other tariqahs were like that that they would give the awrad, they don't know what the student is going to achieve and basically they would go through a journey of, of different openings. Many would be lost on their openings because they just stop. But Naqshbandiya is not like that, it's a journey down not up. That as soon as they enter into the associations the shaykhs will take them to their stations. So they've reached now, their life now is to dig down and go through all their bad characteristics and experience, go bad characteristics and experience until they can pierce the last connection to the worst character before trying to run away and destroy yourself because the worst demon is the biggest one. That's again like Lord of the Rings where the guy talked to the big shaitan and says, oh thou will not pass, where he had to fight his shaitans too. And the last shaitan is the biggest one because he doesn't let you to reach to be 
your reality. So it's not about going up, other tariqahs were going up but then losing all their students. They would follow a shaykh and say, oh I followed the shaykh, he gave me this aura and I started to talk to the jinn world. You lost that person and then they become magicians because they thought they reached something, they don't have the khuluq, they, have, they don't have the perfected character and they're out dispensing all sorts of zikrs and taweezes and all sorts of garbage because they went to one station and got lost in the jinn world. So Naqshbandiyas absolutely veil the student, they shoot them up to the top levels and now fight your way down. Go through all your demons, your bad character and resolve these issues and along the way different khashf and different openings and hal and expressions of energies come, motivate you, keep going, keep going, keep going. And now faster because wars are coming, the get to where you have to get to. Because the, the war will do a lot of cleaning on its own, you know, it'll pull people to those parda because of the immense difficulty. But try to achieve that without those then is, is much better, much easier to, to reach to those levels and to that reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa you say the last nasheed about Sultan Hazaz, can mm. you please explain how the king jinn helped the Muslim ummah? The jinn? They are guardians for this nation that you have from Buddha, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtadul Akhyar and you have uh, Buddha, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtadul Akhyar, the malaika with jinn. You have different categories of Allah's servants. Many within that category are the jinn nations because this is the way Allah created them. So if you have a mischievous spiritual creature bothering you at home, how do you think Allah will resolve that for you? That you go in the garden and just swing around and hope you, you got something? Or there must be a system that for their kingdom there must be a resolution. For every sickness Allah has a remedy. So means Allah would dispatch someone from their own nation that uh, take care of this problem, you see them, go after them. So this is just the natural logical order. So from amongst the mu'min and uh, believers, very high level belief in Allah that they gave their allegiance to serve Allah to serve Sayyidina Muhammad they are great supporters of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad and they don't interfere with human life. These are not the ones they talk to, they won't talk to you, they won't answer to you, they won't nothing. Those whom interfere with humanity is like a bad Muslim at the mosque, right? You go to the mosque and there's bad Muslims in there. They bother you, they, they take the tasbih out of your hand, they put their feet on your feet. They talk to you at every five seconds, you're trying to do your prayers. So means that anywhere you go amongst believing people you're going to have a lot of problems. It's not that level. We're talking about these mu'min whom they've sworn their life and their existence to the service of the nation. As a result they don't interfere with humanity, they don't talk to people, they don't… you call them, they don't talk to you, nothing. So that's the reality. That's why we also warn people when you go to masjid, be careful because somebody come and talk to you doesn't necessarily mean that he's in a masjid, you're now safe. You're going to find the most difficulty when you go into the masjid. As shaitan entered into paradise and took down Adam, they enter the masjid and they take you down. They confuse you, they, they block your thought process and they say all sorts of things just to distract you from the belief and the reality. And the same with people who try to deal with the jinn. That if they try to deal with them they will be lost, they are fiery nature and they get possessed and all sorts of difficulties. But Sayyidina Hazaz is a sultan over all of these under the believing nations and forces. Those whom are disbelieving then those are nations that they're at war with, with Sayyidina Sultan Sayyidina Hazaz So these are under the nations of Sayyidina Muhammad and these are immensely, immensely powerful, immensely powerful. So this is a, is a great support to the nation and especially last days. 
they supported Ashab al Kaf and they've been throughout the history. They supported the, the Holy Companions, they supported Prophet as a great support to the nation. So these are, these are the way Allah has structured. The jinn sahabi are still alive in Medina. They're all gathered in Medina and there's Masjid Jinn there and they, they pray and everything. So they're, they're there for support. This is a, a tool that Allah gave. Other side also has, right? Because Dajjal is a jinn and he has all his alien ships ready and all his magic ready and everything he wants. Do you think Allah didn't create for us also to be safe? So as they plan, Allah's plan much better. As they think they have power, it's not even a drop in the power of Allah what He can, can give to, to those whom believe, right? Because when they believe, they take from Allah izzat and might. When they don't believe, they take from the energy that's already all around in the atmosphere. So one taking from the atmosphere and energy that's available is not the same as one taking from Izzatullah that has the might and majesty of Allah So the, the nation is not left alone, that's why it's important to, to remember and to recite these so that we understand that we are a weak creation. And Allah has given this nation immense powers, immense realities. Those whom don't accept it, no problem. But when difficulty comes, just remember you didn't accept. They bite your toes. You can email help me <laughs> at nurmuhammad.com. <laughs> Shaykh, they're here, they're biting. <laughs> You've abducted, violated. <laughs> Yeah, these, these, these shaitans are everywhere. I don't know how people doubt they're, they're around but alhamdulillah Allah didn't leave us without protection, without all these tools for the nation. The reason they bring it out in these last days is, is for our protection inshaAllah, whomever wants that protection. If they don't want then a word of peace and these people can go their own way. But the tools are there for those who want it inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, our bad character, bad actions and hypocrisy make us ashamed to connect to our shaykh at times. How do we face our shaykh with so much shame? Yeah, the, he's a washing machine, he's in the shame business. So if you don't go to the washing machine then you're just keeping the companionship of shaitan. So that you can't think like that. So he's a washing machine, if everybody was clean you wouldn't need a shaykh and then he wouldn't be a shaykh. So everything is in need of each other. If Prophet didn't have a nation that was continuously sinning then how would they require the intercession? So this is a gift that, that Allah gave to Prophet Your nation never tires of sinning and I never tired of forgiving them. So that to show the greatness mm. of Prophet that he's interceding, he's washing, he's cleaning his nation and Allah will make his nation to be the so most Allah. praised and most beautific nation. So it's a, it's a, it's a needing process. So if, if Allah wanted us all super pure walking on water then how would we need Sayyidina Muhammad So we're not, not even the guys, nobody is pure, nobody's mazloom. And nobody's masoom except those purified souls. All of us are just trying to be mahfuz and guarded and protected. That uh, protect us because of our love. When we fall, quickly lift us and clean us and put us back in, into production. So, this is not a, a way of being, you know, saintly. This is when the ego is trying to trick us into thinking that we have to be all saints. That's not, that's not at all. What we need is to be uh, somebody who wants to fight our devil. If you're somebody who wants to stand up and fight your devil then come on board and keep fighting, keep swinging and don't think about anything else. Now you think you're going to be a saint one day, I would give that up. Don't, don't set that as your goal because then you making games inside your head. Say, my, my path was to be nothing, I just want to fight my devil and reach nothingness. 
So once you reach nothingness then Allah may open up a reality for the person. But to set it as, I want to be something then that, that becomes like an oxymoron where you're saying something but they're not matching. I, I thought you wanted to be nothing so why are you saying that I'm going to be a saint? So I say, no I'm nothing, I want to take the path of nothingness. If as a result you achieve such a level of nothingness that Allah actually dressing and blessing you, then you understand what sainthood is, well, it's nothingness. So if I'm nothing then it doesn't matter where I am, I go sit with them, I'm nothing. And they wash me, they clean me and uh, alhamdulillah that's the job, that's the way. At least I'm keeping them in business. <laughs> right, the dry cleaner, he, like, he likes the client, has a lot of dirty laundry. <laughs> Otherwise the guy who comes once every six years with one suit to wash, that's it you have? <laughs> Say, yeah, but I like the guy who's out in the field all day long, makes all his clothes dirty and brings them. So this is life, this <laughs> that keeps the, the system moving, it's all the people whom are out in the busy world keeping themselves busy, doing things, being dressed by negativities. Then they turn on the videos, they watch the shaykhs, they do their zikrs, they clean themselves, connect themselves, alhamdulillah now you're clean, go back out and do your dunya stuff for another week. It's not about people hiding in the woods and being all the hidden saints watching YouTube. Thank you Zaidi. Welcome. <laughs> Yeah. Otherwise they would have ordered the shaykhs also, all you guys go hide and just give talks from the middle of the woods and then that's it. But all of us are involved in everything, around everything and Prophet and our shaykhs all carrying everything and be amongst the people. Khalwa dar Anjuman Naqshbandiya is actually the principle of, of keeping secluded amongst people. So it's not the, the, the other tariqahs that went into the mountains and hid in the mountains. You know their, their shuyukh you have to go hide in, in, up in the mountains to find them. So we went here, we went in this cave and the shaykh was sitting there. But Naqshbandiya was, no, no, their, their offices are right in the city there, you gotta go and be amongst the people. Why? Carry the burdens, deal with them, carry the people whom are active and involved in this dunya. And then their power was much more powerful when they can keep one face in dunya and again open their heart towards akhirah and keep a balance of these two. So work in a candy shop and not eat candy is much more powerful. So this dunya is just is filled with all these different uh, realities. Keep amongst them and keep your heart clean is the accomplishment inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.